Chelsea King didn't have to die. John Dady and, uh, oh, wait a minute, this is Chris. Uh, you're on with Chris every, um, every week, right? Uh, yeah, usually, you know, Donna. I've, I've, it's been a while since I've chatted with you. Yeah. So what's up? Well, I got, I've got to maybe a, a little twist for you on the issue of parole. Um, th- th- and one case affects uh, San Diego, and one case affects me personally. There was a new law that just took effect this year that said if you were a juvenile at the time you committed the murder, a first-degree murder, you, it, you have to be basically let out no matter how many years ago the murder was committed. There's one case right now where a San Diego police officer was slain in 1978, and the parole board is recommending that that person be let out, and so that has to go to the governor. And I'm involved in a case that a murderer was, has been in prison for 39 years, but because she was a juvenile, the parole board is now recommending she be let out, um, and, and that's going to the governor, and that was a family member of mine. Well, you know, John, it's a it's a system that is that is absolutely broken. And, and I don't see the point of California putting together a task force that says, you know, hey, people have died here. Let's figure out what went wrong. They tell them what went wrong. What went wrong is you don't have enough people to keep an eye on the people that you're letting out. And I think with realignment, we've seen an increase in crime all over the state of California as well. So just pile that on top of this. And we, I mean, we have chaos. And then the state of California goes, oh, well, you know, yeah, we can't do that. We can't, you know watch them. I mean, <laughs> really, it's totally unreasonable. And it has to be infuriating. Well, it, it, it's totally insane. Under this new law, there really is only one main criteria uh, whether or not to let them out, and that is whether or not they're a threat to public safety. But again, some of these real brutal first-degree murders, clearly not only would they be a threat to public safety, but they've been institutionalized. They've been in prison 30 and 40 years. So clearly, they're going to be back in the system, I guarantee you, within a year. But because the way it's set up, the, the, the parole board, according to them, which I don't agree with, they say their hands are tied and they have to let them out. Well, their hands are tied because they're, you know, we make these these laws. We want people to be able to to be rehabilitated, and I and I think that's a wonderful idea in theory. Um, in practice, it doesn't seem to be working out a lot of the time, especially when you're talking about the most egregious offenders. But to, to give you uh, to kind of lighten things up and to make you laugh, I'll tell you that a pretty recent parole hearing just a couple of years ago, the inmate was asked, you know, what her plans were to get out. Uh, and that type of thing. And she said she's been learning computer programs because she knows that's, you know, been, uh, wasn't around when she was incarcerated. And when she was asked what uh, program she was le- learning, she said DOS. Well, both oh. the commissioners and everybody in the room started laughing because, as we all know, DOS hasn't been around for years, if not decades. Oh, man. Oh, God. Listen, John, you know, good luck being able to keep her, keep, keep her behind bars. 